Good morning. I never know how loud I'm going to be. Um, it was wonderful to see you all here this morning, here in person, and to you at home. I don't know what time of the day it is that you are watching this, but hello to all of you as well. I am starting my visitation and have been doing some visits, but if I'm not getting to you fast enough, please call the office and leave a message, and I will make sure to, uh, uh, to, put, to prioritize you. So uh, please, please do that. And I do caution you, I don't know what it is that you've come here today expecting, but I caution you, you may not get what you want, but I will be praying that each one of us will get exactly what it is that we need this day. Our readings during November speak of the end times. Zephaniah proclaims the coming day of the Lord will be filled with wrath and distress. Paul says it will come like a thief in the night and urges us to be awake and sober. Jesus tells the parable of the talents, calling us to use our gifts while we still have time for the greater and common good. In a world filled with violence and despair, we gather around signs of hope, word, water, bread, and wine eager to welcome the good news of Christ's coming among us. Please join in our call to worship. The time for harvest is close at hand. What have you done with the gifts God has given you? Praise God for the gifts and for opportunities for service that they represent. Generous God, accept our gifts and our lives this day. Loving God, accept our praise and gratitude. Amen. At this time, I would invite our young people to come forward. And Angela Jensen, our placement student, uh, has worked on a little message for you. And I know then you will be zipping, zipping out of here to get ready for our Christmas uh, our Christmas service at uh, in December. Good morning, everyone. It's so nice to see you. Well, here come a few more. Yeah, you can come on over. We have space. So as Pastor Laurie said, my name is Angela, and I'm a student pastor here. And what that means is that I'm learning how to be a pastor from Pastor Laurie and everyone else here at St. Matthew's. And so I get assignments to do. And one of my assignments for today, just like you get assignments in school, is that I'm going to be talking with all of you. And I have to say, this is the best assignment I've had yet. <laughs> I have four nieces who are ages 7 to 12, and they make me so much smarter. They teach me things all the time. So I'm excited about what we can learn together this morning. So I'm wondering if all of you can see what I'm holding here in my hand. $20, that's right. And the reason I'm holding $20 is that the adults here in church are going to be hearing a story this morning that Jesus told about a man who gave his servants some money and told them to go and take care of the money. And then when the man returned from his trip, he asked them what they had done with the money. So a couple of them spent the money and they ended up making more money in the way that they invested it. Maybe they put it in a bank and it earned interest, or maybe they used it to buy things that made more money. But the third servant didn't do that. The third servant dug a hole and put the money in the ground. Well, what do you think of that idea? Seems kind of silly, doesn't it? Well, because what do we normally do with money? You buy stuff with it, exactly. So that seems kind of silly to dig a hole and put money in the ground. 
But the servant was afraid of what would happen if the servant did anything else with the money. But the point that Jesus is making in this story is that everything we have is a gift from God. And we're not supposed to dig holes and bury it in the ground. We're supposed to use it in the world to do God's work. So do you have any ideas of how we can use money to do God's work? Buy food, exactly. Buy food for people who need it. Any way else we can use money to do God's work? Well, some, we need money to keep the church running so that we can share God's word with people. So that's something else we can do with money. And there are other needs in the world too, like people need housing, and they need help getting from one place to another, especially when we live here in the country. People need to be able to drive, right? Ah. So sometimes we donate money to things and it helps people get rides and get around. It can help them get food. It can help them get housing. About a month ago, we had an event here at St. Matthew's for the Alzheimer's Society and we raised money for people who are ill with Alzheimer's to help them. So there are so many good things we can do in the world with money. So that is what God is asking us to do, to use money that we don't need to meet our own needs to do God's work in the world. So just like the man in our story who gave his servants money and sent them out to do God's work, I am going to give you this $20 to take to Sunday school with you, and you can talk with your teachers about what you might be able to do with it to do God's work in the world. So you can donate it to the church or donate it to other organizations that do the kinds of things we've been talking about. So who would like to be in charge of the money until you decide what to do with it? Oh, I see a couple of volunteers on that. Unfortunately, I can't split it in half for you or it won't be any good anymore. So how about one hold one side and one hold the other side? There you go. You can carry the money together. <laughs> all right, so you got to be in charge of the money. So you could all talk together about how you can use that money to do God's work. And please come and let me know what you decided to do because I'll be very excited to learn from you some more ideas for how we can use money to do God's work in the world. Well, thanks so much for coming to talk to me today, everybody. It was nice to see you. I think you're headed this way now, off to Sunday school. Yeah? Okay. Bye-bye. Let's dreams of living justice.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Righteous God, our merciful Master, you own the earth and all its peoples, and you give us all that we have. Inspire us to serve you with justice and wisdom, and prepare us for the joy of the day of your coming. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. I invite you to be seated as we open our hearts and minds to hear the Word of God. This morning's first reading is from Zephaniah chapter 1. Be silent before the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at hand. The Lord has prepared the sacrifice. He has consecrated his guests. At that time, I will search Jerusalem with lamps, and I will punish the people who rest complacently on their dregs, those who say in their hearts, the Lord will not do good, nor will he do harm. Their wealth shall be plundered, and their houses laid waste. Though they build houses, they shall not inhabit them. Though they plant vineyards, they shall not drink wine from them. The great day of the Lord is near, near and hastening fast. The sound of the day of the Lord is bitter. The warrior cries aloud there. That day will be a day of wrath, a day of distress and anguish, a day of ruin and devastation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness. A day of trumpet blast and battle cry against the fortified cities and against the lofty battlements. I will bring such distress upon people that they shall walk like the blind. Because they've sinned against the Lord, their blood shall be poured out like dust and their flesh like dung. Neither their silver nor their gold will be able to save them on the day of the Lord's wrath. In the fire of his passion, the whole earth shall be consumed. For a full, a terrible end he will make of all the inhabitants of the earth. The word of the Lord. Our responsorial psalm is Psalm 90. Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to another. For the mountains were brought forth, for the land and the earth were born. From age to age, you are God. You turn us back to the dust and say, Turn back, O children of earth. 
thousand years in your sight are like yesterday, when it is past, like a watch in the night. You sweep them away like a dream. They fade away suddenly like the grass. In the morning, it is green and flourishes. In the evening, it is dried up and withered. For we are consumed by your anger. We are afraid because of your wrath. Our iniquities you have set before you, and our secret sins in the light of your countenance. When you are angry, all our days are gone. We bring our years to an end like a sigh. The span of our life is 70 years, perhaps in strength even 80. Yet the sum of them is labor and sorrow, for they pass away quickly and we are gone. Who regards the power of your wrath? Who rightly fears your indignation? So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Here ends the psalm. Today's second reading is from Thessalonians chapter 5. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brother and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say there's peace and the security, and then sudden destruction will become will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman and there will be no escape but you beloved are not in darkness for that day to surprise you like a thief for you are all children of light and children of the day we are not of the night or of darkness so then let us not fall asleep as others do but let us keep awake and be sober for those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of love and faith, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other as indeed you are doing. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 25th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. And then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. And then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with two talents also came forward saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I made two more. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. 
Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, you have what is yours. But the master replied, you wicked and lazy slave. You knew, did you, that I reap where I do not sow and gather where I do not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers. And on my return, I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one who has 10 talents. For to all those who have, more will be given and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. <clears throat> Let us pray. Gracious God, you have gifted each and every one of us with talents right from our birth. Help us to see what we have and help us to share it with others. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Weren't those some fancy readings today? All darkness and weeping and gnashing of teeth. Matthew's Gospels are almost done. We're almost done. But today I'm going to ask you to put on your imagination caps. Thank you. This feels like we're back in uh, the polka dot door. What would you do if you won the lottery? It's not a little lottery. It's a big sum of money. Let's say $50 million. What would you do? Are you the pay off all my debts kind of person? Or will you buy a new home or a luxury yacht? Maybe take a trip around the world. Oh, the places you could go with that sort of dough. Now, what would you do if you were given $50 million, not as a lottery windfall, but as a trust? What would you do if you had someone else's money to look after on their behalf? Would you treat that money if you knew, how would you treat that money if you knew the owner would return for it at a later time. Today Jesus asks the parable, tells the parable of the talents. And a talent was a unit of measurement back in the ancient world, as in a unit of money. And the money Jesus talks about in the parable is a lot of money. More than we could probably imagine and most likely will never hold in our hands. Being handed five talents would have been just like winning the lottery. Think of those big giant checks that people get. And they get to hold the one that reads $50 million for you to take care of until the master returns. And then when he does return, things get dark. Two servants used the money entrusted to them and both doubled what they received. And the third thir servant buried his talent, thus retaining its original value. Sadly, the last slave gets the boot into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The master says to the first two slaves, to all those who have more will be given, but from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. So here's the thing. If we see ourselves like the slaves and the master as God, 
then what does the story say to us? That God will take away from those who have nothing? That God punishes us if we don't earn a great return on the investment? I can't see Jesus meaning this. Not the Jesus who healed the sick and suffering, who raised his friend Lazarus from the dead, and who said, let the little children come unto me. If we are the slaves and God is the master, then this parable goes against the idea that we should care for the least of these. When the master takes away the pittance the last servant had. Could this lesson Jesus is teaching be about money? You know, take financial risks. Don't play it safe. Or else, God will punish you. The kingdom of heaven is like what? The stock market? Maybe not. What if this version of the gospel's meaning is not about how we should handle money, but rather is about handling our abilities. One writer suggests this is how we got the word talent in English. And if that is true, then the parable becomes what are your talents, your skills, your abilities, and how are you using those? Now, while it's not so bad an idea to think about how we are using the gifts God gave us and how we handle money, I just do not think this is what Jesus was trying to tell us. I believe with all of my heart and soul that the treasure which has been entrusted to us is the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. In just over a week from the time Jesus is giving this lecture series on the return of the Son of Man, crowds will be screaming, crucify him, crucify him. And it's in this moment that I can only imagine that Jesus is frantically wanting to give the disciples as much information as he could cram into their little brains. Jesus knows what's coming for him. And even though Jesus spoke to the disciples about the temple being destroyed and rebuilt in three days, well, how could the disciples possibly know how important the words Jesus speaks to them this day truly are? Matthew ends his gospel with the Great Commission. Christ sends the disciples out into the world. He says, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. Jesus is ascending into heaven and has entrusted them and us with the greatest treasure. And I don't think we can fulfill this commission if we don't realize that the message Jesus began to proclaim was a reality of our belongingness and our belovedness. And that Jesus spoke of the reality he called the kingdom of God. In this kingdom of God, Jesus told us the last shall be first and the enemies shall be loved and, and, and we are forgiven. And I am pretty sure Jesus paired talk of God's kingdom with talk of forgiveness of sins for a reason. The good news we are called to proclaim is that Jesus says to all of us who find ourselves cornered and trapped, you belong to God and are beloved by God and in God's kingdom there is forgiveness of sin. You see the world tries to catch us in the shame of what we have done and what has been done to us. 
the moments when we are trapped in thinking we will never be more than who we are in our worst moment. And those who have harmed us will always be who they were in their worst moment. <laughs> but if Jesus can defeat sin, death, and the devil, I'm pretty sure forgiving our sin isn't going to be that difficult for him. We are more than what we have done, good or bad. Martin Luther once said that it is not God, but the devil who rummages through our garbage, looking for already forgiven sins to rub in our noses to say, this is who you really are. But in Christ, who we really are is forgiven. And so is everyone whom we resent. Sorry, but it's true. They are forgiven too. This reward and punishment system we read about in today's gospel may be effective for behavioral management, but as Christians, it's not about controlling the masses. Our faith is supposed to be about raising the dead. And to follow the crucified and resurrected Christ is to live as a people who get to be wrong. We get to screw up and muck things up and die to our old ideas and be reborn as often as we need it. This is the message we are called to proclaim. To know deeply the grace of God, which makes all things new. So my beloveds, while we await the return of our Lord, may this be the good news we proclaim. So we too will hear our master say, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your master. Amen. Our hymn of the day is, O Christ the Same, number 760 in your book.
Friends, let us turn our hearts to God, our breath and life, as we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Gracious God, you give talents and gifts to all your people, and you equip the church to serve. Turn us from fear and self-serving ways that we use our talents to glorify you and encourage our neighbor. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You have been our dwelling place from one generation to another. Sustain the life of the planet. Protect farmlands and harvests. Direct all people in wise stewardship of all the Earth's resources. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You call us to honesty and integrity. Instill these values in the hearts of all nations and their leaders. Free any who are oppressed. Expose all corruption and bring redemption to the victims of injustice. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You teach us to count our days that we may gain a wise heart. Where there is sickness or sorrow, bring healing. And where there is loneliness, reveal your love in community. We remember before you especially Norma Rule, Greg Rune, Chase Mountain, Lloyd and Kathleen Widmeyer, Graham Pepler, Doug Bender, Florence Burr, Richard Moore, Maria Geit, Mary Grawman, Cliff Noon, Pastor Barry Lang, and Marie Pepper, and those we name before you now. Cindy. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for the faith formation ministries of this place. Give to all our children, our youth, and to all the adults who study your word, the breastplate of faith and love. Shape us by your love and show us how to encourage one another. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. Gracious God, you are faithful in all generations. For the promise of life and rest and for the witness of those who have died in faith, we praise your goodness. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We offer our spoken prayers and those held in our hearts, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. As our offerings are being brought forward, we are reminded of God's abundant love for us, our gifts of time, talent, and treasure that we lift up to our Creator, for these are the offerings of our lives, our livelihoods, and the bounty of the earth. All that we are, we give for the feeding and healing of the world. I would invite us to sing verse 1 and 2 of our hymn 712, Lord, whose love and humble service.
pray together. God of all goodness, generations have turned to you, gathered around your table, and shared your abundant blessings. Number us among them, that as we gather these gifts from your abundance and give thanks for your rich blessings, we may feast upon your very self and care for all that you have made through Jesus Christ, our sovereign and servant. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed our, uh, indeed right, our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the choirs of angels and with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Mighty and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and gave it for all to eat. And he said, do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. And gathered into one made new this day in and through Jesus' resurrection from death. Let us pray the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You, beloveds, are welcome guests at the Lord's table. It doesn't matter where you're from, who your parents are, what you wear, or who you love. This is the table where we receive the true presence of Christ in bread and wine for the forgiveness of sin and the promise of new life. My friends, there is a place for you at the table. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
I would invite you to stand as you are able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ to strengthen and preserve you in eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, in this simple meal you have set a banquet. Sustain us on the journey. Strengthen us to care for the least of your beloved children <laughs> and give us glad and generous hearts as we meet you on the way. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we could ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. May the God of all creation in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, give you reason to rejoice and be glad. And the blessing of God, sovereign, Savior, and Spirit be with you and everyone you love today and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for our announcements. I wanted to say tomorrow, November 20th, is a Remembrance Day for all of the trans people who have died. Uh, the world has not been kind to people who are different. And so today I remember all of those um, who were harmed, who were hurt, and who were killed um, because we know that God loves us all, each and every one. So this day, you will not be running out right away because there's a little bit of a chit chat y'all need to do, congregational meeting, but I promise it won't take that long. So that's first. Um, also a reminder in your bulletins, right? Take some time to read through. We have money available for projects and or needs that are in our congregation or the community. So if you see a need out there, Angela will give you 20 more dollars. And <laughs> okay, maybe not. <laughs> but the stewardship fund uh, does have money available. So. Uh, just talk to the office, well, talk to Tracy in the office and she can give you more details. Also, if you did not, <clears throat> were not able to get photos done for the directory, maybe you'd like to um, submit your own photo or um, have someone take that photo for you. Again, let the church office know. Next Sunday, please join us for refreshments and a re-showing of the 150th slideshow. Not all of us got a chance to actually see it. So Al is putting it together, and he will be showing that after church next week. Confirmation classes this week, and there's a whole plethora of stuff that's happening. We've got a potluck on the first Sunday in Advent. Sunday school is on, and they have a concert 
on the 17th, so please read, and we don't want you to miss any of the activities that are happening. Oh, and my Advent Cafe on Wednesday afternoons at 2 o'clock, a time for tea, treats, and a chat. So I hope you can all make it. Are there any other announcements we need to share? What birthday? Oh, yes. So receipts will be mailed out. If you do not get a receipt and you have given a donation to Alzheimer's, please, what's that? $20 or more, yes. <clears throat> so uh, please see Elaine. <clears throat> Are there any celebrations to share? <gasps> Birthday? Oh, well, don't just point at, tell us. Ron's birthday? Anyone else have a birthday? Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you, and many more. Do we have any anniversary celebrations today? Not quite the time of year for everyone getting married, eh? Awesome. Well, I pray that you take care of each other and have a good week. Uh, our sending hymn is 826, Thine the Amen. and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.
I invite you to be seated for the congregational meeting. Pastor and Lori and I look forward to meeting all of you in the auditorium for refreshments when you're done talking. <laughs> 